big data platform in a digital media type industry can be quite complex. As, as, I, as you can see, there are multiple components to that uh, type of an architecture. You would have a real-time decision engine, which is making decisions uh, almost instantaneously. There is a, a massive data processing grid on the back end, which is feeding an analytics and a reporting type subsystem. Now, there's a lot of complexity associated with building and architecting this type of a solution. And I want to walk you through some of the considerations to keep in mind uh, when you're trying to build or architect this type of solution. Now, the first and foremost thing is, is scale, right? So how does uh, this particular architecture scale uh, with, with different parameters. Now the interesting thing is each of these components actually scale differently and they have different parameters that drive scale. Uh, the real-time decision engine scales based on the number of events that are hitting. So the more machine-generated events or the more humans that are interacting with it causes it to have to scale. Uh, the data processing grid, on the other hand, scales based on volume of data, right? And also the frequency at which it needs to uh, process that data. The analytics subsystem scales based on the complexity of the computation and frequency at which you're running those uh, uh, computations, right? The so number of models you have uh, and how many times you're invoking those models. Um, the reporting uh, subsystem typically has scales based on the number of end users, the number of reports you're running, uh, and the types of queries, whether they are ad hoc type queries or they are actually uh, much, much shorter, uh, more predictable templatized queries. So there are a lot of different uh, criteria that, that drive scale, and scale depends on the actual component itself. Then the type of data also actually uh, is very diverse and that determines uh, and that's a key consideration. For example, in this side of the uh, of the ar architecture, the real-time decision engine and the data processing grid, the data is usually um, semi-structured uh, and maybe even unstructured, right? So we're talking about text and tweets and those type of things. And as you go start looking at the analytics subsystem and the reporting subsystem, the data tends to become more and more structured. Usually when people are introspecting uh, data from an end user perspective, it tends to be a little bit more structured, right? So there is a, a variation in the complexity and variety of data as you go through this chart. Another thing that drives um, this particular uh, architecture is workload, right? As you can see, um, each of these components actually manage different types of workloads and have different workloads characteristics. Uh, the real-time decision engine has to a be able to make decisions in real time. It's sub-second, sub-millisecond type uh, response rates. So typically you're looking at uh, very high write throughputs. Uh, you're looking at in-memory type systems wherein you can retrieve data very quickly. The data processing grid um, is doing a lot of a long running data processing, a lot of transformation uh, type activity. So it's a slightly different type of workload. Uh, it's a balance of both I.O. and also uh, compute. Um, the analytics subsystem is typically very compute intensive, uh, and at the same time, you're also doing a lot of disk I.O. You're, you're doing full table scans, you're looking at uh, large volumes of data, doing aggregations, and you're also running uh, fairly CPU intensive tasks. Um, the reporting subsystem has to deal with a very uh, a diverse set of workloads. You're doing trickle feeds and updates into the system, um, you have short queries, and then you have ad hoc queries. So balancing and finding the optimum workloads by system also is, is can be quite a challenge. And then the technology choices, right? So today there are multiple technologies available in the market um, that can in some shape or form uh, address the requirements of each of these components, right? So we are seeing uh, traditionally for, for, for this type of a solution, uh, we, were, you, you know, we would see ca ca customers or companies uh, build a three-tier architecture. They would have an application server, they would have a web server of some sort, which is handling the user request, and then below that you would have a, a relational database of some sort. Now, with internet scale, uh, especially when you have to serve billions uh, of events every day, the RDBMS doesn't necessarily scale to meet uh, the real-time decision engine components. So we are seeing more and more customers or companies move towards um, either key value pairs or distributed hash tables, right? Um, things like a, a Couchbase or a Cassandra or even an in-memory structure. So that's kind of what uh, uh, is, a, is a technology choice which, is, which, which scales and, and optimally handles workload for real-time decision engines. Uh, for the data processing grid, uh, we are seeing emergence of Hadoop as a very uh, valid and, and viable choice, uh, simply because it's distributed, it's parallel, uh, you can use different uh, programming paradigms, primarily MapReduce, uh, to access and process data. 
for the analytics environment, we are seeing a, a growth in analytic appliances, right? So analytic appliances are interesting because they are able to do uh, in database uh, processing, which means you don't have to move data back and forth out of the analytic appliance. So they are getting very popular and you could use either Hadoop or the analytic appliance to, to, to act as your uh, sandbox, depending on how much data we want to use. Uh, in terms of reporting, uh, again, we are seeing, um, you know, uh, popular graining popularity attraction of either columnar databases or uh, or in memory databases and and depending on the type of need they may work or, or, or they may have some type of shortcomings so there are different types of uh, technology choices uh, as you can see and uh, so one thing is, is fairly clear putting all of this in a single monolithic um, enterprise data warehouse no longer makes sense because as I said they all scale differently they all have different workloads so you have to really think about multiple components now when you start putting multiple components in place obviously that creates an integration problem right and integration can be most costly uh, difficult to maintain and uh, may have uh, may add latency to the whole system because you may be replicating data so that's why you have to think about strategies like uh, smart consolidation which IBM is promoting to make sure that all the different technology components addressing the solution work seamlessly and work very well a couple of other considerations to think about are skills um, you know, different technologies that I talked about actually have different skill dependency. Um, you know, data warehouses or appliances typically have, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know are, are dependent on a database administrator or a database developer type skill set. Uh, for some of these other technologies, you may need a Java developer or a Hadoop developer or a MapReduce developer. So depending on the type of skill and resources that you have available in-house, that also ends up driving or determining some of these choices. And finally, cost also is a very important consideration, right? And there are two ways to think about cost. One is either do you want to uh, pay a, a little bit uh, extra upfront uh, to buy a system that can scale and, and, and is simple to manage over a longer period of time, or do you want to have a low barrier to entry uh, and, and buy uh, a solution that runs on commodity hardware, but over a period of time uh, has an increased TCO and becomes very difficult and cumbersome to manage. So these are all the different considerations and choices that one has to make in order to put into uh, place a, a scalable uh, big data platform. Yeah.